Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com. Tomato 14. And in the previous one, we created a question type where we can decide if it's single answer or multiple answer. And so far, our question is still a string, but we decide if it's single or not by using this enum. Right. We showed other solutions and they are perfectly valid. We just decided to use this one. Yep. So now we can go back to our tests and we need to change some things here. It shouldn't get just a string. It should get the question enum type holding the string. Right. And we need to decide if we're going to do a switch on the enum cases in the navigation router and have two methods here. We could have a multiple question method and we have a switch here in the route method or we can pass the question type in here and the factor implementation is going to switch and return whatever it, it has to do. Right. Immediately I can see a problem having multiple methods because we don't know how many types of answers we have. Yes. So if we add a new type, we need to add a new method. We break the interface all the time. Exactly. We break other modules. Exactly. Okay, I think that's enough <laughs> to just go with this solution. So it's better to pass the model and let the factory decide. Yeah, the factory should be the decider and not the router. Yeah, so we need to change this. And in here as well, because those types are defined in our protocol as associated types, so they need to match. Otherwise, the compiler is going to complain about it. Let's see if we can compile. Yeah, we need to wrap it in questions everywhere. We need to specify a type. Yeah, let's do this. Q2, Q1, Q1. And this needs to be a question. And the same here. We can have it as a key and a dictionary because it's hashable. It is hashable. Mm -hmm. We cannot have this here. I think we can have the old dictionary type. Small i. The dictionary. So we can have the same dictionary here. There it is. <laughs> so the compiler cannot understand the literal, yeah. the literal notation. That's interesting. So we need the same here. And here. Whew. That was quite a refactoring. It still passes. So we just replace with the new type. Right. We can carry on with the result. It also keeps the system open for extension. It doesn't constrain us in many ways. Yeah, agreed. Let's move to the route to result. Let's do it. Route to result shows result controller. Now we stop result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a problem now. Our result type doesn't conform to hashable, so we cannot store it in a dictionary. Right. Well, we can make it conform just in our tests, right? This is not the production behavior we're using elsewhere. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. So if I have result with your controller, I get one first because this is getting messy. Okay. And we need to create a result and we route to result. Let me create a result. I want to make sure that I have one. And the first is equal my view control. No need to. There's another problem. And I cannot create results because the initializer is internal, if I remember correctly. Yes, it doesn't have a public initializer. So we have a problem there. Because I cannot create one in this module. Right. What I can do is to create a private extension for the results type with initializer. And then I can give it values for the properties. Yes. And the properties are answer and score. Answer, question, string, string. And I think we're going to have the same problem here with the dictionary. So let's do this up front. And it needs to be a dictionary. So that's our answer type. It's a dictionary of key question and answer string. And it's called answers. And it also has a score. Self.answers equal answers and self.score equals score. I think that's all. Can I compile this? I think the problem is that question conflicts with the with that question there. The question here. Maybe we can just use question answer. Yes. Okay, so it's still generic. Cool. My mistake. That's what it is, because it's using the question answer type in the result. It's a bit confusing because our enum also is called question. So now we can create this. 
and I can create a result with question single answer Q1 and the answer A1 and the score will be 10 let's say then we need the parameter name also answers parameter name yes okay and now we need to stop the result so we can create this function stop result a result of type question string string like that and you need to stop results so stop results is a dictionary of result question string and view controller yes okay so stop results is a dictionary of key result question string that returns view controller the key is stop results question it should be stop results result okay and our result type doesn't conform to hashable so we cannot uh -huh. store it in the dictionary we can have a fake hashable here for our test just for our test purposes yes and it's private so let's do it here now we need to implement our hash value int uh -huh, but now this needs to be public so our hash value is let's return the answers dot hash value there goes the other completion and the compiler is going crazy. Why did you set it public? Because of the hashable protocol. Apparently, I don't need that, so that's fine. Oh, this needs to be public. And it needs to conform to equatable. Yes, so it's static. And we get the left hand side result and the right hand side result. And we return a boolean. So now we can return answers equals right hand side dot answers and left hand side dot score equals right hand side dot score okay let's see what's going on and now and we need to give it the type question answer question answer it's public okay answers has no hash value okay you can return one here and all of them are going to have the same hash but the equatable is going right. to fix the conflict it's just a fake hashable for our tests so uh, start function and it needs to be public yes I was expecting that <laughs> so we need to make sure that they are equatable that's interesting so the answers are plain dictionaries with questions that we know they are hushable and answers that we don't know they are equatable yes can you see when types start getting in the way yeah Never had to do that with an NS dictionary, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we can say if they have the same score? Well, <laughs> that's one way to go. Very Actually, hacky. I, I don't mind that. So yeah, we have some decisions to make here. We can just not have this. It's going to make easier our testing, of course. And again, this is not a production code, right? True. Just compare the score for this test. I don't think it's that bad. I know it's bad, but it's it's not that catastrophic. Yeah. At least for this test. So let's see. But we don't have a, even a method here yet. So let's do this. So we're going to create a result view controller method for result. This and it doesn't need a callback. Yes. Pretty much what it is. That's it. So now in here, we can return this stuff. Well, stop result for result. Yes. That's the real assertion. Let's run this. Yeah, okay, so. Implement that. So we can get a factory result view controller for result, and we can present this. That's it. Yeah, it passes, but I don't like. I don't trust this code very much. Let's add another test here. I think it's important to have two here as well. So this is second view controller and this is second result mm -hmm. and let's put a different score and let's stop second result should give the second view controller back and let's make sure that we have second view controller as last and we need to route twice and this should be second result Oops. I don't know what happened here and let's route twice if this passes then I I agree with this implementation here. Ugh. We could also, in production, have the result implemented hashable properly and have a real hash value and equatable function. 
I don't think the result needs to be equatable for production. Yeah. This is for test purpose. I don't <laughs> like one bit changing the production code for making a test pass. I would prefer to have a, an implementation like this. Yeah, I agree. So it's a trade-off again, right? That's being a programmer, a developer, an engineer. It's, it's all about working with trade-offs, making those decisions. Another decision would be, let's not test it. It's just one line of code here. Look how many lines of code we need to test it. And I get this. Yeah. We could say, have a different way of testing it, just testing manually. And I just want to show that everything can be tested. We can have a very close to 100% coverage. And these are the trade-offs. We could have UI tests. They are fragile. So there's a trade-off there as well. So yeah, make your own decisions. Yeah. I'm just showing that it is possible. There's probably better ways than this, but I think we should stop here. And that's the implementation we need. Maybe we need some refactoring here. I think we can have a, a private one. show. Gets a UI view controller. And we move this here. And now we can just call show. And the same here. We just show. Whoops. I inverted the parameter. Here. Yes. Yeah, it's about time to stop, right? Let me run the test again. It passes. So there it is. That's our protocol, view controller factory. Then we have our navigation controller that talks to it. And we have our type question. So now we know if there's multiple selection or not. We can route everything in a navigation controller. We can go next and implement the view controller factory or even the presenter. Uh, let me have a look here. I think we should probably find something to refactor. Xcode gave up trying to color my code. I think this is the generics. There are too many generics. Look at this. There's some things we could do here. We could use some type aliases to make it more readable. But there it is. Factory stub in Swift. It's up to you. Well, if you yeah. want to test everything and TDD everything, that's a way of doing it with unit tests. A brief mention about the view controller factory because we literally added there the results view controller for result method. We could have different protocols for its view controller, right? Oh, okay. We could have two protocols. Right. Like this. And this is the results view controller yes. factory. And we inject like two factories, a question factory and a result factory. Yes. Two different implementations and play more with this modular approach. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Have the same class maybe implementing both, right? It's the exactly. so-called interface segregation. <laughs> yes. The I, the I in solid. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. The reason I don't do it often when I start writing something is that this is something that is very easy to break down when it's needed. So I things that are easy to change later, I'm not going to over-engineer my solution just because I might need it. If it's easy to change, I'm going to change when it's needed. If I'm going to make a decision like having the concrete factor here or not, I prefer to abstract it beforehand because that's hard to change yeah. later. Yeah. That's very hard to change later. So I think we should go to the diagram now okay. and show what yeah. changed here. Let's see what's, what's going yeah. on. Yeah, let me commit first. So let's update our diagram. We have added a protocol, view controller factory that the router talks to. And we don't have an implementation yet, mm -hmm. right? So what would change if we, instead of having a protocol here, an abstract factory, we had a concrete factory? And this factory start returning or pointing to question view controllers and result view controllers. It means that we would have a source code dependency on the UI module as well. Inside your router. Yes. Yes. And what I see sometimes people, they, they create this right abstraction to have the separation because they need a separation. But then they have a default parameter in the initializer right. with okay. the concrete <laughs> implementation. And what happens is that, well, you have this, this abstraction for the factory, but you have a source code dependency in yeah. your initializer. If you point any kind of concrete implementation in code, you have a source code dependency. And that's the same kind of dependency that makes things hard to change. Yes. Because if you make all your apps abstracted, but the dependency injection is not abstracted or is not in the right place in the main, what happens is that when it's time to move a module to another project or to reuse it, you have to say, well, who is going to inject this now? Because you made your object's responsibility to also create things and pass things to the next object. And you have a source code dependency and you have the same problems. If you have your abstractions and you can see those lines, you can draw those lines and you never cross them, 
something is going to implement this factory outside this boundary and is going to point towards inside the boundary. So we can probably think about it right now. We're going to have a concrete factory here that implements this. Something like this. So can you see the arrow is pointing inwards? So this module routing doesn't point outside its boundaries, which means it's free to move anywhere. It points to the engine, but that's what we want. Our engine is our core. Everything depends on it. But we don't have this concrete factory yet. And we added the question as well. Exactly. That's a model. Our question model. Where does it live? It's a good question. <laughs> well, so far, it's only referenced in the routing, so I'm tempted to put it here. Our question in Until it has a place to live, that's where it lives. That's mm -hmm. the only place in the app so far that has a dependency on it. Yeah. And later on, we're going to decide where this should be. Right? Maybe you're missing a layer here, a module layer. Seems, seems uh, probable. <laughs> yes. And we can accommodate it, whatever it's needed. Great. Out to the next one. Tomato 15. You don't want to miss that? <laughs> no. Let's go.